Hey guys, King Matt here, welcome to the video. And in this one, we're gonna take a look at how I paint American Civil War Confederate infantry. Okay, to start the um, the painting then, so I use a gray primer. Um, I've said before in previous videos on the Union one as well, um, I always prefer the gray currently. Um, all my projects are prime gray. Um, I just quite like, like it as a base. Um, I find it handy with the Confederates as well because I tend to use that gray as a gray color for the uh, trousers or, or jackets or hats so it just means you don't have to add a gray step in you know if you're priming them gray you just what I do is just put a wash on them and that's the gray done so it kind of skips a step when it comes to colors so just going through some trouser colors so to start with for button up um, I use khaki by Vallejo um, I've been using some Citadel colours, but um, when I come to video this, they're all dried up. So, um, but this khaki actually works really well for a similar um, colour scheme. Um, uh, so I use that for my butternuts, so that'd be jacket and trousers, and I can use it as hats as well. Again, my ba my paint scheme is quite basic, so it's trying to basically use as few colours and few steps as I can but still get the model looking looking nice. So um, yeah, khaki for the button up. Also I've got the gray there from the primer. Um, I do use uh, some black for trousers, which I'm using black gray, um, which I think works well. That's gonna be used for other steps as well, but I do use it occasionally, just dap a few um, colors in there for the um, like black trousers, which I think um, it, it adds another colour to, to the palette and it, it works quite well. Um, for a dark brown as well, if I want to do dark brown trousers, I do dryad bark. Um, again, like with these, I try to keep them butternut and grey, the trousers or jackets. Um, but occasionally I just chuck a couple of random pairs of trousers in as I find it just sort of adds a bit more um, ragtag to the unit. So I've got dark brown here and dryad bark. Um, for a lighter brown, I use goth or brown again i'd probably chuck a few jackets and sometimes i paint, paint keppies with this brown as well just for for a bit of change really um and yeah the, the, this brown for trousers as well works well um then to add a bit of uh, a bit more color to the unit blue so um i can use deep sky blue i also use sorry i didn't actually get this out ready um sky blue so i've got deep sky blue which i'm doing for this batch but i use sky blue for my union so i use them for my confederates as well um and it just kind of gives that sort of like um whether they've collected um clothes off sort of injured prisoners or whatever so they can repurpose them for the confederacy or maybe they purchase some um yeah so it kind of adds that to it which i think is quite nice as well um color wise that's pretty much my base for the trousers and the jackets again the jackets i try to keep button up or gray maybe a few brown jackets here and there you can sort of do whatever colors you wanted to um I, I don't think i think you can get away with a few other different sort of muted colors and um it not look silly um but these this is the palette i stick to as it just gives that again it's, it's trying to create a uniformity in an ununiform um unit essentially so um and i think it, i think it works well so once i've done all these base colors um i'll go into some more detail so i'll do we'll come back now and i'll show you a kind of an example of these base colors um i've just finished painting them so a bit wet but i'll just go through why i painted and how and um then we'll go to the next step okay so here's a selection of uh painted um jackets hats and trousers so i've tried to get get a bit of a selection of what i've got here so i've got some butternut um some of the blues obviously the gray some black trousers uh brown um jacket so you can kind of interchange a lot of them so you can do i, I do brown trousers as well for example there's one here got brown trousers um so that is an option um obviously plain gray there's a few i just done gray so they'll just full grey uniform nothing wrong with that um but yeah here's a bit of a section of sort of what I, how i do it i just go real random with it i try to get a nice mix across the unit 
Um, a lot of my units I'm doing in this batch, so I'm doing a batch of 96 miniatures. Um, a lot of these units have got a lot of butternut in them. I've chosen to have a lot more butternut than other colours um, to just try. And, you know, I've got a lot of grey units, so I want to get a few butternut units because I think they do look quite nice. So one step I haven't done yet, and that's for the jackets, is if I want to give them facings. So infantry facing is blue, and this is where I use this colour here. Um, and I'll just do their cuffs and their collars and any sergeant stripes and stuff like that. So this I'll, I'll be doing it at this step here. If I'm honest, I just forgot about it. So, um, but I'll go ahead and do that now. So I'm, a lot of my units don't have this. It's a sort of a recent thing I've started doing, but I think it's just a nice little detail to add. So um, again, this might not be the right blue, but... For me, it's um, I, I like it. So that's what I'm going to do is I'll do the cuffs now. Um, but yeah, the next main step would be the knapsacks and cartridge boxes and canteens. So we'll go through the knapsacks first because um, otherwise it's, I've got quite a lot of steps to go through listing them all. But the, the knapsack's the easier bit. So you've got a big choice of what you want to do, sort of just from based of what's available at the time. Um, so my Union, I paint black, my Union knapsacks. Um, now you could do that for Confederates. I haven't done it on a Confederate unit yet. A lot of mine I use a brown, but you could use black. So I might actually do one of these units with black knapsacks because it's, it's what they had available. Um, obviously the whole unit, you can just mix match these throughout the whole unit. I normally do the unit having the same color throughout, but you can mix match because these are the type of things where on the battlefield they'd be rummaging injured or dead soldiers, knapsacks for food and stuff, and they might just pick one up and walk off with it. Um, so yeah, that's one color you could use. This is my primary color I normally use, which is dried bark. Again, you see in this color again, I use it quite a bit. I actually use this color for the boots as well. So whilst this color's out, we'll do the boots. Um, again, you could do black boots as well. Um, I do black boots for my Union and I do brown boots for my Confederates. It's just something I do. But again, you can mix and match. You can do whatever you want with that, really. It just depends how much um, swapping and stuff you want to do with painting. So, yeah, dry barks, one for knapsacks, as well as I go for a lighter colour for some of my knapsacks as well. So I've got Screaming Skull, um, or this bone one. So I find that works well for the light coloured knapsacks. So again, you've got lots of tricks, like at least three colours you could be choosing. And again, with the Confederacy, it's less uniform, so you could have all three throughout your unit and it wouldn't look out of place. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now, is I'll do a step here where I'm going to paint all the knapsacks on the units. So like I said, I'm doing four units currently, so I might do one unit with black knapsacks, one unit with brown knapsacks, and then the rest with um, the lighter colour knapsacks. So yeah, we'll go into that and then we'll go... Once that's done, I'll chuck them on and we'll go to the next stage. Okay, so I've um, gone in and painted the knapsacks now. Um, <clears throat> at the same time, I uh, paint the boots and the um, scabbards as well for the bayonet. I use the dryad bark for that. Um, again, with the boots, you could probably go for a black, but um, I just tend to use uh, the dryad bark for my confederates. Um, now, um, I did a choice of the, like I said, with the knapsacks, so I've gone for the sort of cream knapsacks as well as black knapsacks, as well as the dry bark, so brown knapsacks, um, just to give a bit of variation. Now, I've kept them uniform in the unit, but you could mix and match as well. Um, so the next step I do now will be painting the black um, cartridge boxes. Um, and st strapping, so the belts as well as the shoulder strap. Um, again, I paint this in black. Um, I use the black grey from Vallejo. Um, I have used uh, Baylor Brown from um, Citadel um, to paint them. It's just a nice little uh, extra. It kind of, uh, I think, looks quite nice. Oh, sorry, this is Morn Fang Brown. Um, yeah, kind of, it looks quite nice having it as a brown as well, and it just breaks it up a bit. So I'll do a choice, um, probably do a unit with 
the brown and then the rest with uh, black. So we'll jump onto that step. Um, at the same time when I'm doing the black, um, I'll do the brims of the kepis as well, um, or the forage hats. So I'll just do sort of like that little peak brim at the same time. So uh, yeah, I'll jump on and do that and then we'll jump back to the next stage. Okay, so I've now gone in with the uh, black for the um, cartridge boxes and strapping as well as I've gone for the brown as well. So <clears throat> one regiment's got brown strapping, the rest have got black. Um, pretty simple for now, but um, yeah, it's uh, I, I think it works well having that mix of colours. So um, like I said, I've done the um, strapping, cartridge boxes, as well as the peaks on the kepis. Um, as you can see on the officers, I've given them black scabbards for their swords as well. You can kind of do that or sil like a, a metal. So uh, I'd probably use lead belcher. I like to go for black just for mine. Um, <clears throat> so at this point now, we're going to move, move on to the next step, uh, which is going to be canteens as well as the strap for the canteens. So um, I said before with canteens, I'll probably try to go for a blue, um, something like this, or a brown. Um, again, you've got something like this. Oh, the turntable stopped turning for some reason. Um, I'd probably possibly use something like this. Um, let's just get there we go. <laughs> um, probably something like this, or go in with a lead belcher um, for metal. So you've got like the options there, metal, wood, or the blue as well. Um, obviously, there's lots of different canteens used in the war from lots of different manufacturers, so you kind of have a bit of um, freedom with what you want to do on this. For some reason, this keeps stopping. I don't know why. Um, so... That's for the canteens, and then what I do, I go in with a white. Um, so I use pallid witch flesh for the strapping. Um, I quite like this because it's an off white. So I'll go over with the strapping. Um, I have seen people using browns as well. Again, if it just quick thinking, I would probably use this brown to do it. Um, I just really like this brown, it's quite a nice, um vibrant brown i'd probably use that for the strapping as well it, one thing i'm trying to do with these models is if i've got for example this chap in here <clears throat> where i've given him a black um sack a uh, black uh, bag i've chosen to give him brown cartridge box and strapping um, it just changes up a bit otherwise if it's all black it might just be a bit too much going on there i know with my union they are like that but it's just trying to try different things to give them uh, different options so that might be something to consider when you're painting the straps on the um canteens just try change it up from that's why i quite like the white um it just adds another element to the uniform which i think is quite a lot like, it's nice having lots of colors and different um different text like level or detail uh, or level of on the model just um adds a bit more depth i think so that'll be what i do now i'm going to chuck a load of canteen colors down i normally do a mix in the unit of blue and silver um again you can use browns as well I'll try to mix it up i guess um it'll obviously all down to you really so once i've done that we'll come back and we'll visit the next step okay so i finished the canteens and the strapping now um I'm not sure this shows it off so well, but obviously I've just gone through the choices of um, what colours I've used. Um, I have gone for sort of brown strap and in the back two here. That's one regiment I'm going to do with brown straps. Uh, but yeah, I've got the blue, the brown and the metal uh, canteens. Um, there's a couple, I've done one regiment here with a white stripe on their blue canteen. Um, the reason why I've done that is I've seen a, a, a famous painting, or I say famous, I've seen a, a painting with canteens like that i haven't actually done any research into that and why it is like that um but i did just really like the look of it so i've done a unit with that um so the next step really now is going to be um actually whilst, whilst we're on this sorry um i've painted so these chaps that i've got some of them have got like, sort of an open um jacket that chappy there um, I use this opportunity to go in there with with whilst I'm using the white white for the strapping. Um, 
it's all right. I don't know why this thing's stopping. Um, I use that opportunity to go and do the shirts. Again, you can kind of do whatever colours you want. I chose white just because it's easy. Um, but I have done sort of different colours in the past. Um, it's obviously completely up to you what you want that undershirt to be. Um, but yeah, whilst I was using the white, I went in and did that. So, right, the next colour now, which I would do, would be all the buttons and the buckles. Um, and to do that, I use my gold combo. So um, I use this as a base, which is a brassy brass from um, yeah Game, game Air. Um, so I use that as a base, and then I come in with um, this gold here over the top. So um, this is kind of, ignore that for now. But I go in with the brass on all the buttons and the buckles. Um, once I then apply a wash, which will come later, um, I then, after the wash is done, I come back in with this um, gold, just to highlight it, essentially. Um, what you can do with this brass as well, which I've done on other, other models, um, if you look here, I've got the cartridge pouch here. Um, if you wanted to, you can just do a little um, oval on that pouch for the brass um, plate on the pouches. So they use these plates to sort of supposedly hold the flap down, add a bit of weight to the flap to keep it down. Um, so the Union models will have them sculpted, um, but the Confederate models don't. So I don't tend to put them on the Confederates. There's no real reason behind that, apart from it's just not sculpted. But I have done a few where I've gone and put the brass on there. I've done, I think I did it with a Zouave unit. So yeah, that's an option if you wanted to. I might do it on a couple of these um but yeah that's that's there so that's what i'm going to start start doing now is do all the the buttons the buckles um and then uh once that's done i'll jump on to the next step okay so i've gone ahead and um, painted the buttons all in this um goldy brassy color um one thing i probably should have mentioned which i haven't actually done before um and that's just because i was being a bit uh naughty with it and i should have but i'm not sure if you can see but on the scabbards i've actually done the tip um with the brass as well because they'll always have this sort of brass bit on them um to keep the tip of the bayonet um safe and stop stop it getting damaged if it was just a plain leather scabbard the bayonet would either poke through the bottom or when they're sitting down or marching whatever it'll, it'll scuff the bayonet so they have these little brass tips so um, it's always good to paint that in. I said I haven't actually been doing that on any of my models. This is the first sort of lot I've done, but that should definitely be something you think of. Um, but yeah, I've done the rest of the buttons and stuff, so that's ready to go. Um, the last real step now, for now, will be painting the bedrolls. So I'm going to go in and paint them. So normally I do lots of different colours. I've In the past I've done them colour-coded, so I've done like reds, orange, greens, blues. And I've sort of done them colour-coded to the regiment. Um, which isn't, I guess, super historical. Depends where you want to go with this. Um, but I'm going to try to do it as historical as I can uh, for now. Um, um, but also trying to keep it sensible. You know, I could be painting all these little bed rolls with details on them. Like you, you see um, these famous sort of, I say famous, you know, paintings from the American Civil War. Where there's certain sort of blanket rolls of patterns all over them like they would be they're, they're blankets you know in the end of the day some of them did have patterns obviously it's a bit fiddly to do it at the scale in a way and if you just want to rattle through big numbers of units you might not want to spend ages doing individual blanket rolls so basic colors um what i'm going to do with these lot i'm going to keep it real simple for now um necromancer cloak i'm going to use a sort of a dark gray um black gray as well i'm going to use um, so just like a black really, um, as a bit of a, um, dark color as well as I'm going to use gray blue. So, um, I do not, I like the blacks and grays. I think they're quite realistic in a way, or, or they look nice anyway, without going too loud with the colors. Um, I have done sort of, uh, beige as well. So if I, or greens, actually, I've done a few greens. So, um, I've got like deaf. Death Guard Green or Death World Forest from uh, Citadel as well. Obviously, you can kind of do whatever colours you want. Um, but I like, yeah, for now, I'm going to stick to these three colours to keep it quite muted. Um, so, yeah, once I've done that, then we'll be on to our last step, which will be 
washing the model. So I'm going to do these bed rolls, then we'll go on to the next step. Okay. So that's the bed rolls completed. Um, so the dark grey and the black look basically the same, but I mean, I've done it previously and I think it worked out once it was all washed and finished. Um, so it's just having those two shade, different colours of darker coloured uh, blanket rolls, I think looks fine. Um, obviously, you can do whatever code you like, like I said previously. So the next step now, washing the model. So previously on all my Americas of War Confederates, I, all the browns, beiges, um, more earthy colours, I washed with an Agrax earth shade or sort of a, a brown wash. So I washed them and then all the greys, the blacks, the whites and stuff, I washed with a known oil. Um, and, and the blue trousers, so a lot of the, the coloured trousers I wash in the known as well. Um, now, I'm not going to do it this time. I'm, what I'm thinking of doing, I'm going to give this a try, is wash the entire model in Agrax. Um, only to, essentially to save time as um, it can be a bit fiddly going in with all the different layers and stuff and washing individually. Um, so I'm going to try wash them all agra um, all Agrax, which is a brown wash, and just see how that turns out. Um, I don't think there'll be a lot of difference. It might affect the grey a bit too much than I, uh, than I would like, um, but we'll just test it and see. I'm going to start with one regiment. If I'm happy with the result, I'll paint all four. If not, all the greys and the blacks I'll wash with a known. Again, it's completely up to you. I know a lot of people would be happy with just hitting the same Agrax wash on there, especially if you're going to be layering as the next step. Um, so, which I personally don't do. Maybe I should, but I don't. So maybe if you're layering up, you can get away with just using the Agrax, but we'll see how it goes anyway. Um, so I'll catch you once I've done that. Right, that's the Agrax now washed on the, um, the, the model. So um, at the moment, it all looks very brown. Um, I think having the known hitting certain parts of known, certain parts of Agrix, I think makes a difference. Um, however, I've kind of gone for this method this time just to speed everything up. Obviously, I'm batch painting and that's my style of painting. So trying to cut down time is always great. So um, I always find as well at this stage, it looks very dark and very dull. It's not till you hit um, putting the skin tones on as well as do the rifles that I find it brightens it back up. So at the moment it's going to look a bit dull, um, which they do. Um, again, the, having the Agrax and everything's just given a sort of brown tone to it. Obviously, if you're going in layering, um, you can bring that back up. I won't be layering. It's just not not something I do for my American Civil War, that is, anyway. So going on to the next steps, I'm going to lump a few steps together because they're sort of small and there's no point pat, cutting away, cutting back, cutting away just to cover some really basic steps. So, <clears throat> right, I'm gonna go with this gold here. Now this is to do the belt, buckles, buttons, sword scabbards, um, oh, sorry, bayonet scabbard tips, uh, as well as the sword um, hilt and handle and stuff like that, um, as well as any sort of other gold detailing. So all the brass stuff I've hit previously with the bronze colour I'm going to go with gold I just like the way it looks it just brightens it up a bit and it just has a bit of shine to the model especially when it's all sort of dull and dark with the wash because I don't layer I find having something like this looks quite nice um so yeah I'll do the gold then the next step will be flesh tone so I come in with Cadian flesh tone it's just a tone I'm sort of used to I've been painting these chaps for quite a while now all my confederate stuff so some of my painting methods are old but I keep to <clears throat> make them match the rest of my army and stuff um i keep it keep it together with the, the paints so um yeah cading flesh tone i just slap that obviously hands and faces um and obviously once that's dry i just go in with a basic shade which is a right clean flesh shade from uh citadel so i just find gives a bit of depth to the flesh shade colors Again, you can go in and highlight, make highlighting again will make a big difference. There's nothing stopping you going and highlight with Cadian again. Um, but again, it's not something I do because I don't feel like I need to. It's, again, when you're batch painting big batches like I do, I just want to rattle through them as well as still having a nice look. And I think that's, it to me, the base and the, the wash to me looks good enough. Um, one day I might go back and do it. But for now, this is what I do. This is my method. So what I'll do is I'll get these done. And then we'll jump back once those sort of three three painting stages are done, and then we'll go on to the remaining stages. 
Right, now the flesh is done. Um, I think at this stage it starts to look a lot better. Um, it's uh, just having that sort of flesh tones in there just sort of brightens it up, I, f I find. Um, and you can kind of start to see what the bigger picture is, which, um, yeah, gets a bit more, um, increases the sort of motivation when painting such big batches. When you, like beforehand, I thought it looked very dark and dull, and mm, but now having the flesh on there just makes it look that bit bit closer to completion. So the next step will be the hair. And at the same step, I'll do the rifles as well, um, or muskets, rifles. So the reason behind this, I'll, I'll explain my original reason behind this, and then I'm just gonna add my tweaks. So beforehand, I'd go in and every soldier would be brunette, <laughs> and they'd all have Gorthor brown for their hair okay um and at the same time i'd paint the wood on the rifles as well as the poles for the flags or the drumsticks for the drummers uh, that's just a generic woody color so um so that's why i do the hair and the guns at the same time so um that's what we're going to do here so this next step that's why i'm going to do the hair and the guns at the same time um, I don't think there's much point me doing all the hair and then coming back, telling you about it and then starting again. So um, we'll start in the next next bit. So we'll just do it all at once. So it's going to be quite a big step by the time we've done it all because there's going to be quite a few colours used. But in Prince Theory, it's going to be just the rifles, muskets and um, hair. So, yeah, starting with brunette. We've got this Gorthor Brown and this will be the gun colour, okay? So straight away, if you wanted to do what I did, but it was a bit lazy and just do everyone brunette, go ahead and do that. Bang, done. Um, if you want to chuck in some more colours, I've been using this as a bit of a blonde colour. It's very bright, but once you wash it, it tones it down enough, but you still have that sort of colour punching through, which can look nice for these miniatures just to add something a bit brighter in. Um, just something I've used. I quite like it. Obviously, if it's too bright for you, go for a darker colour. But like I said previously, these a lot of the colours on these is quite dark and muted. So having those brighter colours coming through can look quite nice. Can look quite nice. Um, as for uh, an orange, I've used this for my um, some of my Union stuff. I think it looks all right. Again, it's a very bright orange, but if you put a wash on it, it dials it down enough. But it's still just nice having that burst of colour in there. Um, so that's what I'm going to try for this. Uh, again, don't have to. Um, just just try it out, really. Which, um, again, I think it looks all right. And then what I'm going to do for black... So I've never done black hair before, but I'm going to give it a go because all the models I see online of people painting, it, it was black. So I'm going to try Necromancer Cloak, which is an off black, which I've used for their bed rolls and stuff. I'm going to use this instead of the um, sort of off black from... Flair, which I've used previously, just because a lot of the hats are black. So I don't want to have black hair and the black hats and it's all, blah, blah, you know, exactly the same colour. I'm going to just try this. I'm going to try it. This is the first time trying it. So we'll just see how it goes. Um, so that's going to be my four hair colour shades. Um, and then, yeah, going back to the rifle. So, so that's the hair colours done. Um, so you can go in and do all the hairs. What I will do then is wash with Agrax. Okay. Again, very samey to this whole paint scheme. Agrax doing a lot of heavy lifting. So we'll go in with Agrax. Um, the next step, what I'm going to do then, will be, we'll go on to the rifles. So I've already explained the wood, the rifles, goth or brown, fine. Um, then the next thing I'm going to choose, which I didn't prepare very well, is the gun metal. So gun metal, if I can find it, there it is, will be lead belcher. So uh, lead belcher, I'm going to go in and do all the brass band, um, sorry, all the metal bands as well as the barrel, trigger, the um, sort of flint slash con uh, concussion cap um, hammer. Um, so I do all that and, and bayonets, of course. So that's in the lead belcher, okay? And then to finish it off, all the strapping I've been doing for my rifles uh, is white for pound witch flesh i just like the look of the white okay i've seen some brown but i just like white so that's why i'm going with this so 
Previously with a rifle, I've gone in and done the wood colours, then I wash it with a Agrax, and then I go do the, my metal and white and wash with a gnome. Um, I do like the way it looks, it's just an extra step can take time. So for this um, batch, I'm just going to wash it all with an Agrax. So I'm going to do all three layers, the wood, golf or brown, the lead belcher for the metal, Pallet witch flesh for the strap, and I'm just going to hit it all with an um, Agrax wash and see how it goes. It should, in theory, be exactly the same. It should work um, as well. So, obviously, whilst I'm doing the guns, the muskets, and the rifles, you can do the um, poles for the flags. Same principle, use the Gorthal Brown for wood and a metal tip, a uh, lead belcher tip. Um, you can do kind of a goldy tip as well if you wanted to, which is using my method I've used for these gold detailings, which is the brass and the gold on top. Um, and also I do the officer's swords as well. So lead belcher for the blades and wash them with Agrax or none. So there we go. Um, we're going to go, like I said, it's quite a big step, sort of, but I don't think there's much point in me breaking it up because like with the browns and stuff, I'm doing it all at the same time. So I'll do these uh, all at the same time and I'll just come back to once it's done. And to be honest, once that's done, just having a quick think, that's it. So that's that's the base paint scheme done. Um, what I will do then is um, just explain how I paint the drummer's drums. And then we're on to sort of basing and obviously the finished varnish. But we'll go into that once we get there. So um, I'll come back once this step's done. So the muskets and the hairs now all done. Um, so really the last step is going to be the drums for the drummers as everything else has been done. So I tend to keep my drums really simple. Um, to start with, I do a Bane Blade, so I'll colour the whole thing in Bane Blade uh, brown. Um, and then the top bands, so the bands around the drums, um, I tend to chuck a colour on there, so I might do a yellow, red, or a blue. So this is what I'll be using. Um, I could colour the actual main body of the drum a colour. I haven't done that yet, but that's very much something that would be seen. So you could do that as well. Like I, said, I use Bane Blade to do that. Um, and to finish it, I'll use Pallid Witch Flesh, and then I'll go and wash it with Agrax. So um just got four drums to do so it's gonna be an easy step but yeah so base bane blade and then put some color details on which colors you want really whatever um and then do white uh pallid witch flesh for all the um sort of um straps and that sort of tightening bands for the the skin so um we'll jump back once that's done also another step i'm gonna add now actually i might as well is just going for a varnish so varnishing i never did it on plastics um purely because i don't know just didn't think i needed to but metals i do do that and some of these are conversions with metal heads and stuff from the perry's range or some actual metal metal sculpts so i just go in with a matte varnish um and yeah that's the, so i wouldn't do it on my plastics but you probably ought to do it it's just i it's just another step i i don't know I, for some reason i don't do it and i've never had an issue with not doing it so but um yeah, really, we should do so. That's the matte varnish I'd use. I've no, never gotten with Raucan's varnish. I've had it before and it was just really shiny and I didn't like it, so I used brush on. So that's the finishing step and then we'll be on to basing. So we'll get the drums done, varnish what I need to do and I'll see you at the next step. So drums done and now we're on to the last step, which is gonna be basing. Um, so it's actually a new basin method for me. I'm actually going to do multi-basin now. Um, previously I base on pennies and then use sabot trays. Um, but I'm going to give this a go. I just think it's sort of the next, uh, <clears throat> logical step when it comes to making such a big, big army that you want to play big games on. So these bases here are 45 mil rounded square bases. So, you know, square bases, rounded corners. Um, Basin technique is going to be basically exactly the same as uh, my Union stuff. So I'm going to use um, AK um, sort of a basing compound, which is like a, I think it's called Dark Earth, which is um, basically like a good mud mixture. So I'm just going to slot that on these bases here and then I'm going to hit it with a static grass. So pretty basic. Um, so obviously you guys do what you want to do. 
I feel like multi-basing might allow me to make the bases look a bit more interesting. Maybe. We'll see. So, um, yeah, that's basically where we're at now. So I've decided to leave the flag bearers off for now because I want to attach the flags um, and then put them on the bases. So that's my next step is sort out some flags and then put everyone on the bases. Um, so, yeah, what I'm going to do is come back at the end then once everything's done and we'll just have a look at the sort of completed uh, four regiments I've done and then we'll just have a brief chat. Uh, at the end so we'll see you at the next step so that's it it's all finished up now um i've gone and done the basing so um i thought i'd show the complete lot so obviously i was doing benning brigades for the video um uh, just kind of these guys have been done for a, a week or two um but i've actually gone ahead and finished up another brigade which is laws alabama brigade um <clears throat> whilst i was in the in the mood to do painting i thought i'd crack on so um, but yeah, really the next step is just showing off this basin. It's new to me, this style of basin, but I just sprinkled some stones in and then a bit of grass and I think it looks good. Or I'm happy with it at least. Um, obviously multi-basin as well, so I went through that in the last little bit. Um, I think that's just going to be the way forward for my army now, so um, it just it just makes things easier when you're picking stuff up, you know. Uh, beforehand I had them all on trays and you'd pick them up and people would fall off. And, um, so yeah, I think this is... The more logical step um <clears throat> so i'll do some zoom in close-ups as well whilst we're here but yeah so as i said i've done the bennings brigade and then um i've actually done another brigade whilst whilst i um during christmas so these guys i think maybe this just shows how if you're in the mood to do a big batch painting it's quite a, a simple paint scheme that you can just rattle through um Obviously, this other brigade is done, painted the same way. It's all the same. Um, a few little things I keep trying differently. Um, so I'll show you here, for example, um, all the cartridge box um, packs. I've put the brass plate on it. I've painted that on. There's obviously nothing sculpted there for the Confederates, but I've painted it on. Um, I don't think I did that on any of my... No, my, no, my Bennings brigade, as you can see here, they, they haven't got them. Um, but... Yeah, I've actually painted them in on that. Um, again, with these guys, I've done a mixture of sort of cartridge belt, belt um, packs. Um, <clears throat> and also I've kind of, um, uh, probably these guys, I've painted them a lot quicker, but I tried to keep a lot of the colors similar. So um, they've all got the same knapsacks. Um, I didn't vary the knapsacks on these. Um, some have got brown cartridge packs, as you can see. Um, and yeah, the, the blanket rolls as well, I've kept it pretty simple. I could probably spend a bit more time on the blanket rolls, but I was in the mood to just get these done. These is, this is the last um, plastic infantry confederates I have. Um, so I've just blasted that and done it now. So I actually haven't got any more infantry on the on the painting pile for the confederates. I do have four regiments for the Union, but um, this is me done for the confederates for now until um, I get some 3D printing done. So yeah, um, I said this is the, the obviously the basin and this is the end result. Um, flags normally flags of war a lot of these flags i've actually used from um so from the sundered union kickstarter uh they released a flag sheet um with it which um it's just a free pdf and i paid a company online to print them for me because my printer wasn't good enough so i've used those um some good options on there um for the for the for the flags you kind of for the actual battle flags it's pretty simple you've got these um so these are the battle flags which yeah i think obviously there is have quite a few variants um so if i look at some of the these two flags here actually some spares i had from my flags of war so this is the flags of war version compared to this obviously the scale might be out as well on these flags these cheaper ones might be a bit smaller um they did say on there for the pdf to rescale it if you want um but i didn't know how to do that so i didn't um, yeah, and here's another variation as well so this one's not got the middle star if you notice on the flags um but trying to do the research on what flags i want um who carried what flag and stuff like that is quite hard Whereas I feel like if you go army, if you're doing the army of Northern Virginia by just getting a army of Northern Virginia battle flag is a pretty safe bet. So, uh, so yeah, that's it. Like I said, flags, flags of war, 
I've got these three flags here. I'm not sure if I'll use them again, um, but it's an option and obviously you've got GMB and stuff. So, but yeah, um, just obviously that, that, this is wrapping the video up now, I guess. I, I was, I keep waffling, but this is how I paint um, my Confederates. It's, I find in every regiment I do, I'm tweaking the paint, I'm adding a bit more, not doing some, you know, there's things I figure out what I can and can't do, especially when speed painting, which I guess you could say this is, it's just about getting numbers down. So um, it's just, yeah, about getting chaps on the board. So I do try cut corners where I can without losing um, the unit effectiveness of, of how they look. So, um, and yeah, as you're painting, you just pick up little things. Like originally I never used to do multiple hair colors, I do now, um, you know, doing blue cuffs for the infantry looks quite nice. I do that on some of the regiments, changing the cartridge boxes and stuff, little things like that. You can just tweak it, knapsacks and everything. And it um, looks better. It, it just, but obviously you do it as far as you want. Um, that's a good thing with American Civil War. There's, there's lots of, I think it's quite fun with the uniforms and what you want to do. So, um, all right, I'll stop there because um, I've just waffled. But like I said, this is, all done now hope you found it useful again this is a video on how i paint stuff um i'm sure there's other tutorials out there that are great um but yeah that's just some insight into what i do but uh thanks for watching as always um and keep an eye out for any more videos i do in the future cheers